And so yeah. now Conway is in the hospital mm -hmm. and Benny's still spitting. Mm -hmm. And then I believe it was at that point that does, does West start to come out of that shell and start to rap again? Well, yeah, Wes, Wes was more like I've already laid so much groundwork with networking and running into the right people and, you know, paying my way into this meeting or that meeting or that uh, affiliation. Or you know, I'm, He's networking and moving around in these circles trying to market his brother, and then now he has no product to market. So, it's you know, it's only right that at that point he – he because he can rap just rap bro you you got it he so, was fa it, it, he know. was forced to jump back on the mic essentially yeah yeah i mean and he, you hear him say all the time i'm gonna retire i hate this i don't you know like if you really pay attention to he he, he really prefers the business and the you know making the moves you know rapping it's like when you rap for that many years and you know you strong at business, it's like, okay, I'll do the rapping thing because I know I'm good at it. I'm nurtured in it, but I, I, I'm really ill at this business. So let me do that too. And and, uh, and let's talk, I'm, again, I'm bouncing around a little bit. Y'all looking at uh, Ronsky, better known as Ronald Reagan, Reagan era, the fashion line, um, designer for Griselda, in fact. So the first mixtape is D Block to Ma Block. What what year right is that correct? Yes, if I if I remember correctly, the first first tape from uh, Street Entertainment was uh, D Block to My Block. What was that and about? It was it was dope. It had a K Slade drop on it. It was the, them just rhyming back and forth over so, over songs that either D I mean um uh the Locks or D Block had produced or came out with. Or they might play a song with them with D Block rapping, and then come back the next track with them rapping even harder over the same track. And Benny was at some point was signed to to Trust. Thirty Eight had him signed. Yeah, yeah. So so Benny had already already has had his own imprint from back in the days, and it's called Black Blood Entertainment. Okay. Now. Black Blood, because of, you know, maybe other things and affiliations that they've had, you know, in the streets, they begin to, you know, hate on them as far as, like, the, the law enforcement, and they started to call them a gang. Mm. So they made it where they couldn't really rep Black Blood Entertainment anymore. So that's how it changed into uh bsf or black soprano family so they use the word family so that you can't get this mixed up with a gang we a family as far as the trust group with 38 special benny had already had mixtapes with special from way back like those guys had already been connected from you know just those two artists alone have been connected for a very long time yeah so it was only right that if anything to ease up on the um, black blood imprint to get help from the trust imprint. And was Spech was already producing beats then as well? Um, from what I know, Spech had his hand in the producing side of it way back in the day. Um, as we got older and became men, you know, of course, I, I didn't really link with with those guys from Rochester or, you know, that, that area anymore. So, um, you know, I've, I don't know much about what he does as far as producing right now, but I'm definitely a fan of the way that he spits the, the words that he puts together and, you know, um, him and the Coogee rap, um, project that he got oh is super God. cool. And oh my if God. you, if you really want to hear some knowledge, uh, listen to what he says on my first break. His bars on my first break is, oh my god! So, Come on, special. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go back and li listen to that. Man, I'm gonna quote yeah. a special line because I walk around people all the time in <laughs> in real life. People that don't listen to like this real hip hop, and I have to say to them. And then uh, uh, Spes says, uh, 
you bought a you bought a block and my block was balling. I get a phone line in your bitch name and tell her not to call it. I love that. <laughs> no, he I'm a, I'm gonna give you another one that he killed it. He said, "You speak to fools with words that are less valuable because jewels in the wrong hands become less valuable." Oh, okay, okay. And then what he did on Honest Truth, that's that's fire. What he did on Honest Truth with AZ, so, such knowledge coming out the man's mouth. Um, yeah. it, it's just incredible. That, like when he go into that yeah, whole... That boy's he, special. That boy's special, man. Always was the truth. Always was a high, higher spitter, even as a teen. Bro. Like even back in the day, I'm talking about 2002, 2003. I know a dude from Jenny. Philly, I want to say. And he told me... Or was it somebody else that told me this? I heard somewhere that even back in the day, special name was ringing bells like, like locked locked up and shit. Like people that was locked up knew about how hard his rep was like all over the place. Like yes, like shit. definitely grounded, definitely certified. No yeah. way around it. This man is the truth, and it's only right that he be uh, you know connected to. Benny and you know that how strong of a spirit he is and being up from upstate is it's only right. And and Etho is from Rochester too, right? And he's yes. spit and make beats and he coming up and he hard as fuck too now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so and then uh be, like intro, like when I see Benny and Special on the screen together, they just they look like magic to me. So I do I do I would like to see more from them. Um yeah. let's let's talk about again going back to uh, West Side's voice. Um, number one, he never switched. We know Benny and Conway kind of messed around with a style over here, some beats over here. West seemed to always be the guy that stuck to his gun, th that that grimy East Coast sound, never switched at all. Um, I, I mean, like I said, I, I got introduced to West Side through rapping. Um, and he rapped the same back then. The voice was the same. It was more complex. It was more bars fit into the verse. Mm. Whereas now it's not as many of the the, the pun. He would have maybe twenty punchlines in a song back then. Twenty, thirty punch hard punches. Mm -hmm. You know now. You know he he makes it. Their hard punches just left. Less of them. As far as the sound of his voice, as far as the cadence at which he raps, as far as the the choices of words and all that, it's still the same from back then. Yeah, it's just yeah. now it's quiet enough to hear it. You understand what I'm saying? Like at the, the time when we was teens, it was so many people that was rapping crazy and bars, and you know, it was so many. Spenders, you know that it was a, it was basically a lot of a lot of people in a in a crowded room all yelling. You, everybody trying their hardest to be heard. Everybody wanting to be you know heard as far as like lyricism and you know witty bars and all that stuff is concerned. Whereas at the time that we in now, it's it's a lot more, less people in that crowded room yelling. So it's easier for people to hear what's going on as far as this style of rap now because it's not that many people that's rapping like this. Yeah, and, I, and like I said, I know they bounced around a lot. They've been on the grind for a very long time, which is it's a testament um, to the stick to as people like to say in, in the business world. But we know Conway was signed to uh, Free Bands at one point with Future. Yeah, him, him, and um, uh, Rocco and Future, they had a you know a little situation. You, I, you know, it was one of those. I put to you like this: anybody that would have heard Conway spit back in those days would have been like, "Okay, I gotta, I, I have to sign him mm. to keep him from crushing me." Mm. You understand wow. what I'm saying? Wow. Most artists just don't have that. Especially in Atlanta, not not to this Atlanta or nothing right. like that. Say that they whack or nothing like that. It's just this level of lyricism and this level of tuning that this guy has wasn't heard of, you know. So they were more or less was looking like, let me get him before he get unleashed on me, mm -hmm. you know. And then 
So, so not only is he it that, but he has integrity, real guy, real, you know, it, it's, it's, it's those elements that would help a uh, street artist uh, be more marketable or, you know, sellable. You know, this is it, it, so much authenticity there that they couldn't, you know, turn a, a batting eye to that much lyricism and authenticity at the same time. You would be a fool. But the that's how that situation end up not really coming all the nah, way. No, nah, it, it, you know, for, for, you know, whatever, uh, for whatever it's worth, I just think that it was, it's all about time and it just wasn't the right time. You and know? Then I know and it, it, when you, when you think about things like that, you also, you know, look back at them hindsight right now. And there is no Rocco uh, future connection. Hmm. So where would Conway have fallen in that situation had it gone that way? 